What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD podcast mode interview. Where every single week, we interview straight up top badasses and bring their knowledge and wisdom to you guys. So today, as always, another epic guest, another amazing guest. This is actually a second time repeat guest in the show. Uh, we'll have a link to his first podcast. This is a dude that dropped out of high school to chase a professional sport, professional soccer player uh, that didn't work out. He had to go out there and create other um, sources of revenue for himself. Got into entrepreneurship. Uh, now he's been flipping and rehabbing and renting uh, many, many homes, right? Over $50 million of real estate personally that he's fixed, flipped, rehabbed, uh, owns his, his investment properties inside his portfolio. Recently also decided to jump into the real estate uh, uh, realtor game um, and opened his own brokerage. And he truly believes that this is a disruption model. You know, he calls it the Uber of real estate state, not in the way that you think, not to displace the real estate agent, um, but a model that will go out there and help the real estate agent, but disrupt the brokers that are out there. So real quick, before we jump into today's interview, I want to make uh, our plug, our sponsors that make all this possible. Our first sponsor is my 90 day mastery bootcamp, my personal mentorship program. Um, we go through about 40 hours of live training. There's an additional 30 to 40 hours of just uh, pre-recorded training in there that's available for you. I give you access to my entire playbook, right? I give you my operations manual on edible fashion. So everything from how I generate leads, how I do my listing presentation, buyer presentation, everything we do, everything we say from hiring to, to training. There's nothing inside my business that has helped me sell over 5,000 homes, well over a billion dollars in volume. And now this year alone, 2017, do close to uh, $200 million in gross volume sales, do over 650 transactions. So I give you guys everything. So 36 plus hours of live training, plus you get daily access to me throughout this mentorship program. So make sure to check us out, www.90daymastery.com. Make sure to use promo code LIVEMASTERY, all caps, all one word, all together. We've got some huge promos going on, making it very, very effective and affordable for everybody to jump in. So make sure to check us out. Use that promo code though, because that'll save you a shit ton of money. Our second sponsor is perfectstormnow.com. If you want to use the CRM and website that I use to go out there and generate well over 2,000 leads every single month in my real estate business, and right now, you guys, I'm averaging just over $2 per lead. Um, it's just absolutely insane. Full names, full numbers, full emails, all that information through Facebook. Um, if you want to go out there and become a lead generation machine, as well as have a proven follow-up system to be effective and efficient inside your real estate business and close these deals, uh, perfectstormnow.com is the CRM that I have that I use inside my business. Uh, promo code MASTERY, P-S-N, all caps, all one word, all together, MASTERY, P-S-N, that will save you the registration fee, so it's only $199 a month, um, and it's month to month, so we don't lock you into long-term contracts, right? So if we don't do our job, if you don't like us, you can give us the X. Um, our third sponsor is REO University. Those of you, if you're like me, right, it's never a question of if the market is going to correct and, and crash and, and shift and change, it's just a matter of when. You know, the markets are always shifting, always going to ups and downs, right? We got, we got insane seller markets. We got insane buyer markets that then result in foreclosure, short sales, all of that. There's no reason you should ever let your real estate business get into a vulnerable state. It's up to you if your business crashes, right? Nobody else's. So like for me, I allow myself to become recession proof. There's no such thing as a good or bad market. It's always good for somebody. So I've, I know how to shift and adapt, right? The market might be good for me to go out there and sell bank loans. It might be good for me to attack short sales. It might be good for me to attack traditional buyers and sellers. It might be good for me to go after hedge funds or investors. So this is just a necessary skill set to help you sharpen your ax where you then become recession proof inside your business. So REO University, you guys, has 22 modules. Teach you everything from how to get into REO, how to service that REO, how to complete your BPOs, trash outs, evictions. I mean, there's nothing inside the program that is not uh, included in there. Um, and this, this is a, a program that's available to you now. And like the boot camp, you don't have to wait for it. You can sign up right now and start learning, growing, and kicking ass in REO and short sales with the program. So this is at university. Dot com. All right, you guys. So again, epic guest today. Our guest today is Angelo Rumora. 
who again, a massive investor, now jumping into the brokerage world and really did doing uh, some big disruption out there. So hopefully you enjoy this interview as much as I did. We'll see you inside the interview. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast interview. Where every single week, we interview top badasses and just straight up top um, amazing entrepreneurs out there dominating their spaces. People choosing to not live a life of mediocrity, but instead to go out there and create big, amazing lives for themselves, their families, as well as have an impact on others. So today, you guys, we have a special guest on, actually a repeat guest on the show. Um, we're going to have a link to his first podcast where he goes deep into his story, how he dropped out of high school to, to chase his dream of becoming a professional soccer player, which, uh, uh, you know, eventually led into him becoming an uber successful real estate investor, entrepreneur. Um, I mean, this dude is, is bought, sold, flipped over $50 million plus in personal real estate. And since the last conversation that we had, you know, he's doing a lot of big, amazing, insane things. Recently opened up his own real estate brokerage, uh, um, has entered the software business and, and, and a lot of other things that we're going to jump in deep today. So really stoked and honored to have Angela Romero on the show. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, buddy. Thanks for having me. Badass is my middle name, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it, man. So that's why I love the GSD Mo podcast, man. Just people getting shit done. I love it, dude, because we talked a year ago. And, and, you know, obviously you're doing it, we're doing a ton of big things, you know, right. And, and then in the last 12 months, man, I mean, just, just to see the growth that you've experienced and all the things that you've done, you know, it's, it's, I love entrepreneurs that get more done in a year than most people can get done in a lifetime. Yeah, mate. So a few changes from last year. I mean, we moved into a new office, um, bought a huge 6,000 square foot building, three floors. So that's really exciting. Um, my, my bread and butter business, Josh, I hire cash flow on Forexing revenue from last year. I've got like 15 full-time employees now, a total of 50 people that are associated with our company. We launched the brokerage. Um, I'm super excited about that. You know, turn down venture capital. Um, I'm actually moving next year to New York to focus on building out the software and, and potentially working with a few venture capitalists that I, I, that I believe can kind of assist with the growth. Um, what else can I tell you, man? I don't know. I'm, I'm absolutely on, on a rocket ship. I mean, who's Elon Musk? Uh, it's the real estate dinger that's hammering shit out. Um, and, and dude, I'm just super excited, super pumped. I mean, I'm, I'm pulling long hours. Um, but another thing that I've kind of uh, uh, changed from a work-life balance is I'm focusing more on health nowadays. Last year, mate, I was pulling long hours, but I didn't feel as good as I did today. So, you know, I'm consuming all my multi the vitamins, I got the liquids coming, you know, the fluids going, um, I'm eating what I need to eat, I exercise, I mean, you're a fit guy, I can see your shoulders popping up there. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I think that's very important to all of the hustlers out there and entrepreneurs, you know, you, you have to, you have to add that health um, side of things to, to your day to day, because you'll just burn out and it won't last long. But yeah, mate, I'm, I'm excited. And I can't wait to see where we're going to take this. Yeah, dude. So um, it's one of these things. And I don't know if a lot of people understand this, but but the the more successful you become, the higher level your self care must also become, right? It just seems like there's such a congruency with that. And since you brought that up, man, I mean, you know, you forexed you your income from an already successful business. You started this new brokerage. You're starting this new tech company. You know, right? You're on fire. What percentage of that do you think now is from? you getting very focused and intentional about leveling up in your health? Mate, great question. Um, to be honest with you, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you because, you know, I, before I just wasn't feeling good. Um, you know, I, I was working the long hours. I was still hustling. I was pretty focused. But, you know, after kind of working that 11th or 12th hour, I really started to go downhill. Um, you know, I, I would be getting really tired. I mean, I ended up in hospital, Josh. I had kidney stone surgery, stomach ulcers. Um, you know, anxiety, heart palpitations, headaches, and how long can someone last with that shit? You know what I mean? You, you're not going to last. I mean, after five years, it's going to come crashing down and you'll die from a heart attack or a stroke. So look, I'm feeling better now. Um, I, can, I can deal with the day-to-day -day easier than I did before. Like I'm not visiting the doctor anymore. You know what I mean? It's still stressful and, and it takes its toll on your body. But you know, the day-to-day -day stuff, I feel like it's just kind of flowing much more easier. My focus, like dude, my focus is always there. Like I'm always roaring. I'm ready to go. When my, my, when my alarm goes off in the morning, it's like a beast stung my ass. You know what I mean? So that's there. But I think what I've done, this change that I've made 
it's just going to allow me to do what I do every single day for an extended period of time. What I was doing before, mate, was suicide. What I'm doing now will be able to last forever, pretty much. Yep, yep, love it, dude. Couldn't agree more, man. Um, all right, man, so, so let's talk about the brokerage first, right? So what led you into that? Because, I mean, you're, you're having so much success with, with you know, your, your, your investment business, so how cash flow. Like, what then led into, hey, man, we're going to go to this brokerage, which, I mean, I get that there's – correlations there and, and, and all of that, you know, but what allowed you to go to that decision instead of, Hey, let's just take Ohio cash flow and now expand this to other cities or whatever. Like what, what led to that decision? Yeah. Love it, mate. So look, I, I want to leave a legacy and as corny as it sounds like I want my tombstone to read the entrepreneur that gave it his all and gave it all away. So my kind of purpose, mate, is to create this unicorn company if it's not going to be a billion dollar business well what the heck at least it can be a hundred million dollar business right shoot for the stars and if you miss at least you land on the clouds um josh look i think that the brokerage world needs disrupting like when you look at the world as it stands today there's a lot of disruption going on with this whole blockchain and cryptocurrency stuff you know look at uber it's disrupting the taxi industry i mean you know augmented reality virtual reality artificial intelligence human beings are becoming extinct right well literally the jobs are going to disappear one area that i haven't seen a disruption happening is the real estate market right yes you've got a lot of real estate tech products and softwares and whatnot but i really think there's got to be an uber in real estate and and what i'm creating with list and sell realty mate i really think that will be the uber of real estate just a few things to touch on there, mate. We're a 100% commission broker. Um, we've got the lowest monthly flat fee out of any brokerage in the country. We don't have any hidden fees, no junk fees, no, no tech fees, no desk fees, no gimmicks. And, and we're building a, a multi-million dollar software platform right now that is going to give all of our agents the capacity to do their job successfully from the comfort of the home or a coffee shop, wherever they may be, right? I'm not going to dive into too much detail what that platform is going to consist of, but yeah, mate, as I said, I truly believe that the whole business model and philosophy that we have could potentially be market disrupting. Um, and as I said, mate, I'm not doing it for the money. It, it truly is to stir the pot so everyone can smell what's cooking. And, you know, I've already pledged to give it all away. As soon as we hit that, you know, seven figure valuation, um, well, actually eight figure valuation, um, you know, I, I've got no problems giving it all away, mate, because I unofficially retired last year. So if I want to pack it up, mate, and, and go to the Bahamas and sip pina coladas and cruise on my little scooter, I can do that. Like I don't have to work a day in my life anymore. So when I, when I say that I'm doing it not for myself, that is the genuine truth. Um, and you know, that's what's truly within my heart. Yeah. As corny as it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I dig it, dude. So, um, you know, but I think with, 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 successful entrepreneurs, you know, I know this holds true for me and, and it sounds like it does you and most that I meet, a lot of people think, oh, you're greedy, right? But it gets to a point where, you know, I mean, it's not about that, right? It becomes, I mean, it's about seeing what our own internal potential is. It's that, it's that challenge internally of how big can we do this as well as what's so dope about it. You create a, a very successful business, all those opportunities it creates for others, you know, right? I mean, it's dope when you have Hey man, I had this processor up me at 12 bucks an hour and now they're making multiple six figures or, or, you know, when you're able to change somebody's own family tree by helping them become a millionaire, I mean, it becomes massive, right? So, so I love it, dude. So then, okay. So go ahead. Just to, just to touch on that, sorry to interject you, mate. Look, if you're not growing, you're dying literally. So there's, there's no other way to run a business and to be a successful entrepreneur, unless you are constantly growing unless you're constantly trying to chase bigger and better things, right? But true entrepreneurship, in my opinion, you know, when I moved to this country, dude, I moved with nothing and I had a million dollars in debt, actually $1.4 million in debt. And of course, I was so hungry and starving, mate, I just needed to make money to survive. But over the years, as I did well and started making money and, you know, I had a lot of capital available, it stops being about you. You know what I mean? Tony Robbins has a great saying. He says, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. Like adding another zero to your bottom line is not going to fulfill you. What you just said, they're seeing someone that's making 12 bucks an hour to making, you know, $200,000 a year, you know, affecting people that are associated with your business, the investors that you are working with, that's where fulfillment lies in. And then, you know, stuff like, dude, I've got a nonprofit, right? We gave a house away to a family in need last year. I'm in the process of giving a house away right now to a family in need. I made the stupid mistake of saying I'm going to give a hundred houses away over the next 10 years, right? On live TV. So that's where the fulfillment factor lies, mate. And of course, you know, creating something big that's going to last long after I'm gone, helping hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people 
Um, that's my journey. That's my purpose. That's my why, dude. And, you know, that's where I truly see fulfillment. Yeah. No, nah, it's so powerful, man. It's, it's, it's awesome, dude. So, all right. So, as you know, this is, I mean, yeah, it's an entrepreneurship podcast. We have a lot of entrepreneurs on. We also have a lot of health and fitness experts. But mainly, it's a real estate agent podcast, right? I mean, 85% of our listeners are real estate agents. And you said something, hey, Uber of real estate, this disruption, you know, which I know perks their ears because agents are scared out of their fucking mind right now of becoming irrelevant because of things like Uber. So can you expand? I know you don't want to go into the software, but can you, or, or, or into the, a lot of details. And I know you're still expanding, expanding and building that out. But as far as your model, you know, can, can you elaborate on, you know, because you're, when you say Uber real estate, you're not like, Hey, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to, um, eliminate the taxi. I'm not trying to eliminate the realtor, right? You're a brokerage that's trying to help these realtors go out there and create success. What you're saying is you're just trying to create a disruption that ha allows the realtor to create more success and be more successful. So kind of elaborate on, on your model, that's what correct. you're doing and, and, and what that looks like. And then also to do the profit margins on, on the brokerage side get really thin. So a lot of people, I mean, I think your model is the best model. Um, um, you know, but you got to set it up correctly because otherwise it can be a huge win for your agents. They get all this, you know, but then you are left with nothing at the end of the day where then you can't support them. You can't help them. So uh, can you kind of elaborate on, on what your model is and how you've created this huge win-win model? Cause I know you're just kicking ass up there. Sure. Yeah. Love it. Love it, mate. And so I'm going to touch on a few things here. I'm really going to go out on the left. My, if I can kind of predict the future, let's talk about a crystal ball analysis here. I think that what's happening, first of all, um, with the whole brokerage world, I think that a lot of agents are starting to dislike their brokers, right? And I've spoken to so many agents over the last five years, and they all say the same story. They give me nothing, but they take away everything, right? So you have to work your ass off and sending out flyers, knocking on doors, begging little old grandma at Walmart to list her house. Finally, you list her house. You sell it after three months of dealing with buyers, agents, title companies, and, and mortgage companies to only, for only the broker to come in and take away 50% of your commission. So I see that there's a lot of resentment going on. And I'm going to predict the future here, man. I'm going to go out on the limb. I think that over the next 10 years, 10 to 15 years, brokers are going to be completely extinct. Okay? You're not going to have brokers anymore on a national scale. Right? I think that this, the legislation is going to be lobbied. They're going to kill brokers because a lot of these folks, they genuinely make, they do nothing. They just pose this big brand stereotypical name and you peg your license under them and then you've got to split your commission with them. So I think there's going to be a company one day that's going to completely lobby that legislation to get that removed. That's the first thing. The second thing, Josh, is title companies. Forget about it, mate. I don't believe in Bitcoin because I just have no freaking clue who this Satoshi Nakamoto guy is. So I just don't get it, right? I don't understand this cryptocurrency world but I do have a brief understanding of blockchain and how it operates and how it works and how it keeps everyone, um, um, uh, it keeps everyone in check, right? You can't bullshit blockchain, right? There's no lying, there's no cheating, there's no errors. So I think that title companies are going to become extinct one day too. I think the blockchain technology is going to completely eliminate title companies. Um, uh, 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 so those are the two big changes, mate, that I kind of see coming in the future. Look, mate, I always tell everyone that I speak to, if you are not willing to adapt to what the hell is going on in today's day and age, you will lose. If you are not willing to adapt to the current times, the tech, I mentioned it before, virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, you have to be using all of these platforms to be able to do a better job, to be able to get more leads, to be able to you know, get more clients, right? Um, if you're not willing to adapt to change, you will lose. Mate, what we're doing is, you know, I, I, I've offered a, a super duper ridiculously low fee discount model, right? Where all of my agents are going to get 100% of their commission, right? I've got a kick-ass referral program where it's very easy, very clean to understand. I see a lot of 100% commission brokers out there. They complex it with different tiers, different structures, offering equity, stock bonuses, transaction fees. It's too complex. I wanted to keep it simple, stupid, right? The KISS approach. Join List and Sell Realty. Pay me 200 bucks a month and that's it. You get to keep 100% of your commission. There's no, no mumbo jumbo there. It's very simple. Um, where I really think, mate, I'm going to disrupt the market in a huge way is with my online platform, right? So my online platform is going to give real estate agents the capacity to work virtually from, you know, their very, very basic and easy to use CRM 
two um, uh, uh, four templates where they can copy and paste, drag and drop, choose their templates, send out a marketing newsletter. I'm going to have um, live support, any questions regarding branding, contracts, lead generation, marketing. All of these things are going to be in one platform where they can pretty much just log in and use it from the comfort of the home or wherever it is. I've done a lot of research, Josh, and a lot of the, te- a lot of the realtors these days, the brokerages, they, they white label their software. I'm building intellectual property. It's so complex that the average agent is not going to use it because they don't do two to 300 deals a year like I, for example, do, right? They might do two, five, 10, 50 deals. They're not going to get uh, you know, involved with all of these difficult software. So we really wanted to make it simple. We wanted to kind of cut out as much of the unnecessary as possible. Um, and, and that's what I truly think is going to be the disruption with my whole model, the brand and the culture that we're creating to my software and my tech, which they can use anywhere they want to. Um, uh, then the last phase of it all is going to be my app where I'm going to tie in the consumer, right? Right now, Josh, we're not focused on the consumer. We're focused on the agents, right? I believe if the agent makes 100% commission, if you give the agent all the tools to do their job successfully, they are the ones that are going to make or break the consumer's experience. But I also fully understand that we are going to have to introduce some kind of lead generation platform at a later date. So look, mate, as I said, I can keep going on and on and on here. I've got all of this mapped out. It's a big vision. It's a big mountain to climb. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm confident that I can do it. I've got some amazing talent on board to help with it. But once all of these are put together, dude, I'm, I'm telling you, I really think that this could be the Uber of real estate. I'm, I'm a confident guy. <laughs> yeah. nah, I, I dig it, dude. I dig it, man. So um, now with your software, j- just out of curiosity, is that going to be something, is that going to be included with the 200 a month or is there going to be a tech fee if they want to use it? I, I'm not 100% sure yet. Yeah, I, I don't know if we're going to, uh, I don't know if we're going to charge extra for it. But look, as I said, mate, I need to look at my margins. It's still so new that we don't even know what our margins are going to be, right? We've introduced the lowest flat fee out of any brokerage in the country. There are no hidden fees, no junk fees. You know, we do have an idea of potentially making money later on down the track from title companies and, you know, mortgage companies. If we kind of start our own title company and mortgage company, we are considering affiliate marketing type agreements where if we have special offers on our platform where we can negotiate deals with AT&T, Verizon, or, you know, office works and get a little bit of a kickback. Um, but dude, as I said, I'm not doing it for the money. I'm truly doing it to disrupt the market. And I believe when you start a business, Josh, if you give value to your consumer, right, and they see value in it, the money side of it looks after itself, right? I've, of course, I have to cover costs. I can't do this at a loss, but I'm not focused on that right now. I'm just focused on finding the right kind of recipe that's going to attract agents to us. Because that's, that's the number one thing right now, mate. You know, it, it's, we're based in Ohio and we're so new. It's tough kind of spreading the word about who you are and what you're doing. And, and when you offer a 100% commission model, the perception out there, uh, 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 first of all, first of all, a lot of agents don't, don't even know that you can earn 100% commissions. Second of all, if they do know you can earn 100% commissions, they just consider the brokerage to be a licensing warehouse which we're not, right? Because I, I am building a value play here, which is the tech. I am building a company culture, which is, as you can tell, mate, I'm very heavily branded. My whole building is painted blue and white and yellow with the company colors. So, you know, there's more to it than just that licensing warehouse aspect. But as of right now, if I could say, mate, I would not want to charge any extra for the tech. I would want to give it away for free. And even when the app is live, dude, I would want to give all of that away for free too. Yeah, yeah. No, I love it, man. So then... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, because if you break it down, right? I mean, I've been in the real estate, on, on, you've been heavy in the investment side, obviously. I've been heavy in the real estate agent side. I'm, I'm 12 years in the business, you know, right? And, um, you know, and I had to leave the big franchise because, I, dude, like my team was paying a quarter million dollars a year, essentially for a name. You know, I was having to buy my own software, my own leads, still pay for my own office space, all of this, in addition to pay them a quarter million. And yeah, it just doesn't add up. And I, I, believe, I believe what you're saying as far as, the big box names out there, unless they figure out a way, um, you know, like let's just say an EXP for an example that now has 5,000 agents and they're, they're on fire, you know, right? They're expanding very heavily. Now they're not a hundred percent shop. You know, I did the math. If you do 50 deals a year with them, you're paying them 26 grand a year, you know, right? But they created a disruption of a revenue. It's an MLM. It's a network marketing play, you know, right? So it, 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 you know, it, it, like, unless you get very creative with something like that, yeah, I mean, I think your Remax is, you're seeing it, like Remax is just, 
their numbers are just dwindling, you know, right? Um, with that. So, so I totally agree with you there. Now then, okay, so you take a guy like me, if I were to join your brokerage, um, like this year we'll do about 700 transactions. I have a, a pretty large team. Um, so I'm looking at, okay, $200 a month, that's killer, right? But then I have 38 full-time agents that are on my team as well. Is it, do you, do you, do you have it scaled or is it just 200 bucks? Cause even if it was 200 bucks for each one of my agents and no transaction fees, no percentage, we're still fucking way ahead of the game. Yeah. So first of all, EXP, mate, I've been stalking these guys like a hawk. I just don't get that whole freaking Sims bullshit. Sorry, I don't get it. I just think it's a fluffy play um, just to kind of capture attention. Their commission structures are too weird. I don't get it. It's too complex. Um, yes, they're going at a rapid pace. They got this shit together. They're a publicly traded company. It's all good and great. I just don't believe in the avatar crap. Sorry. I think that's, that's way too early these days. Okay. And another thing, they don't even own the software. So what happens if the person that they're white labeling it from decides to shut down, excuse my French or pure English, Josh, they're fucked, right? You've lost one of your main lead magnets to generate the interest to get agents on board, right? Um, so that's one thing. But look, the top brokerages, as per the INC 5000 list of fastest growing companies, Josh, they're 100% commission brokers, okay? That is where the world is going. The consumer will choose the agent based on who the broker is only 3% of the time. Dude, people buy people. They don't buy brokerages. So as I said, mate, brokerages are becoming extinct. Give it 10 to 15 years, brokerages will be no more. There's one thing that is going to stay very prominent, and that is the tech. I think the winner over the next 10, 15, or 20 years is going to be who has the best tech, who has the best tech team, front-end software developers, back-end software developers, branding, culture. Now, here's the big question, Josh. How do you build a company culture virtually? I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out. We are kind of discussing a few things, right? So we'll kind of, we'll kind of try and nurture that. Um, but for example, you mentioned, you know, um, I've got a really cool concept where I understand that there's folks like yourself. You're the alpha and omega. People listen to you. People work under you. You tell them what to do and how to do it, right? So they still need guidance. They still need the motivation, inspiration, and the knowledge. So what I've also done, man, is I want to have team leaders, right? I want to get someone like Josh to join Listen So Realty and then you can have agents working under you where you can potentially have a commission split with them, right? Because you might be the one giving them the office, giving them the support, the free internet, all of the other tech tools that you might be using. So that is something that we're exploring right now. I don't know if we're going to go full steam with it, right? Um, right? Because I think it kind of takes away from a 100% commission model. Um, because as I said, mate, I, I, I want to kind of stay true to the brand. But I think it's a great idea because I understand there's a lot of top performers out there that want to continue having other agents working under them, but they want to save a lot of money, right? Because dude, when you break it down, we get paid 2,400 bucks a month, oh, sorry, a month, a year, right? And I've got a thing now where who joins us, they pay $0 on Tinder until they make their first sale, which is we don't even get paid until you make your first sale. If you do the numbers, even if you're in a 95% split, you are still saving an absolute shitload with Listen So Realty. Right. So look, I don't want this to be a pitch, mate, because I'm just super excited about what we're doing here. Like, I really think it's revolutionary. I really think that once it all comes together, it's, it's, it's really going to disrupt the market in a big way. And I'm seeing that disruption happening with a lot of the other 100% commission brokers that are doing similar things to what we are in the market today. Yeah, no, and dude, and, and, and no, I love it, man. I, and I'm a big proponent in it as well. I think, I think you're going down the right path. You know, I look at the brokerage that I'm with, and I've been with them for a few years now. You know, when I, when I made the move to them, there were 200 agents. Now they're like well over a thousand. Now they're just local to Arizona. Um, wow. you know, right. But they do, they make it where it's it, dude, like nobody can compete, man. You know, right. Um, now I do a ton of volume, you know, right. So I get a better deal obviously than, than, you know, the average agent that joins them. Right. But I don't pay a monthly fee. There's no percentages. There's no splits. There's whatever. I just pay a hundred dollars flat fee per closing. That's it you know, right? Where then, but I look at your model, I'm like, well, I'll pay these guys still 70 grand this year. You pay you 24, you know, right? So, uh, uh, you know, but I agree with you too, because then, you know, a lot of people then are like, well, dude, we got to offer training. We got to offer all the support. Well, you just talked about tech, right? You can offer all that training, all that support, you know, uh, uh, virtually in a digital platform, and especially with all these millennials coming up that have, have been raised on fucking YouTube, you know, right? That's the do-it-yourself generation. So guys like you and I that are techie, 
that are from that do-it-yourself generation. There's ways to go out there, do it right, offer that support, offer insane amounts of training, and and be able to retain those yep. company dollars you're bringing in. So, um, I dig it, man. Are you are all you virtual, dude? That's, yep. Go ahead. Oh, Josh, all virtual, mate. I mean, that's where it's at. Do you want to go to a classroom to learn how to speak to buyer and seller leads, or do you want to do it from the comfort of your home, watching a webinar or a live stream? Like, dude, you're doing this podcast. You're getting thousands and thousands of hits because people do not want to leave their home. They want to be able to watch from, from the comfort of their home, wherever it is they are, on their phone or, you know, wherever it is. So, um, look, you know, I've got – people have asked me the question, what about your margins? How do you make money, right? There are many ways to make money once you build a mass market type product, right? From affiliate marketing, as I mentioned earlier, to title work, to mortgages. Look, once we have volume – Look, there's 2 million agents in the country, dude. Like 2 million agents. 0.03% is 10,000. There's just 44,000 agents in Ohio. Like our current estimates are if we get to 10,000 agents, we're going to be a $100 million business. Because check this out, mate. I'm not a real estate broker, Josh. I'm a tech platform. I'm a, yeah. I'm a software provider, right? So the multiplier for that is much larger than any brokerage. So look, and, and once you are fully tech, not white labeled shit from other software companies and you match all of this up and you throw it on your own platform. No, dude, I'm building everything from scratch. Like I've got some amazing talent on board. We're building it from scratch. The margins aren't going to be, you know, we're going to have a customer service support team that I can have anywhere in the world, right? Or I can have them in like Cincinnati where there's good talent, right? And, and, and you can still, you know, pay decent hourly rates right? Just to get that American kind of lingo gone instead of outsourcing it to, you know, obviously like the Philippines or India, if that's kind of what we're going to, what we're going to do. But ultimately, mate, you know, as I, I hate it, dude, I'm a people person. I want to be the one shaking hands and kissing babies all day long. I'm adapting to what is going on in the world today. It's a very fast paced world. Everything's becoming virtual. Everything's becoming digital. I'm adapting to it. List themselves adapting to it. And look, I think our margins will be fine because tech is going to eliminate a lot of um, overhead costs when it comes to employees and salaries. Yeah. Well, and dude, like in, especially in real estate, man, I mean, people get so obsessed with profit margins and I always tell realtors, you know, right. I'm like, if all you care about is your profit margin, stay small, be an individual agent for the rest of your life and, and don't go big, you know, like my profit margin is thinner than it's ever been. Right. Um, but I make more money. Like it, 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 people just get so, so caught up in all of that. And then from there, you know, it comes to bro brokerages, yeah, I mean, you, you can make, there's so much revenue on the ancillary services, right? You're, you create your own mortgage company and, and you know, um, you, you talk about title being, you know, disrupted and, and out of the business. So I don't know if you go to that level, but, you know, I mean, most, most brokerages I know, um, they're not making the mass amounts off the brokerage. They make it off the ancillary services. You know, it's, it's like, dude, Jimmy John's didn't become a multi-billion dollar company until they realized Hey man, we don't, we can't make the money necessarily off the franchise. We, we've got to distribute and create our own mayonnaise and our own bread and our own whatever. And we're able to sell it to our franchisees um, at a lower rate than we can go through Heinz or whatever. It's a win-win, but offering those ancillary services was what took them to a multi-billion dollar company and expanded that. So yeah, I agree. There's so many different ways to do it. Now, are you, what's your vision for this, man? Are you, are you going nationwide? Do you plan on going globally with this? Yeah. So we're, we're looking at going nationwide as quickly as we can. We figured out a loophole in the system and we can launch this in every state without having to go through the whole franchise laws and regulations, right? So we would be um, licensing out the brand, the model, the philosophy to other wheeling brokers in other states. So for example, let's say we've got someone that's an inactive broker in Michigan, John Smith, and he wants to activate his license just for the purpose of signing a licensing agreement with List and Sell Realty, which is based in Delaware, and doing a DBA as List and Sell Realty. That will immediately enable us to launch List and Sell Realty in Michigan. And we're live. Like my tech, it will, well, the first phase of my platform is being built right now. So this is the real sexy part, mate. In order for you to join a brokerage, you have to go sit down, do the whole bullshit contract shuffle process. Once again, shake hands and put a Jimmy Hancock on every dock. I'll be able to recruit agents all online virtually. My tech will have the capacity to do that. So, and then, you know, for John Smith, who's the broker in Michigan, he's just going to collect a monthly fee, which is going to be dependent on how many agents we have on board in that particular state. Nothing else will be required of that broker except sit, sit back, relax, and collect your monthly residual fees. Back end office, 
compliance, and all of that other mumbo jumbo will be ran from once again. Right now, we're based in Ohio, but I don't know where I'm going to expand offices to have that full blown customer service um, um, center to handle all inquiries from accounts to uh, you know a realtor inquiries and, and whatever it may be that the tech is going to offer. Yep, love it, dude. Love it, man. No, I, I well, I, I mean, obviously, you've created massive success in every venture that you have, uh, uh, you know, been focused at. So I know you're going to blow it up here. Um, when it comes to so that that's you know, we've talked a lot about the, the future of the brokerage model. Um, but you being, you know, the savvy, very intelligent, you know, forward thinking guy, um, those that are actually real estate agents are like, dude, I'm not want to become a broker. I, I I'm the realtor at list and seller. You know, you know what I'm saying? Right? Like, what do you, what do you think going forward, real estate agents that are actually dealing with the buyers and sellers need to do and what their focus needs to be doing right now, whether that be with te- or whatever, um, to go out there and continue to create success and, and not become extinct as, as a real estate community, if you will. That's easy, mate. Stop being fucking lazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easiest one out there. I mean, Lude, I've, I've been doing this for five years now and I was actually just speaking to my wife the other day. I was like, can you tell me one thing that I'm actually good at? And we couldn't figure out anything that I'm good at except one thing, Josh. I get up at 5 a.m., I start at 5.30, and I do not finish until 7 p.m. Just work my ass off. And eventually, when you work your ass off, you, think, you figure shit out, right? You associate yourself with the right people. You learn something new every day, and you go from here to here to here to here, right? So, look, there's too many people talking to talk, maybe. No one's willing to walk the walk. Um, if you want to succeed, not just in real estate, as a realtor, in any business or in anything, you have to be willing to work hard. You have to be willing to make the sacrifices. You know, go bloody door knocking, send out flyers. Yes, beg grandma at Walmart to list a house with you and beg a hundred grandmas at Walmart to list their houses with you. Dude, nothing comes easy in life. And, and the harder you're willing to work, you know, the more things will happen and the more doors you will open. I, I don't believe in luck, right? I believe in making your own luck. Um, so that would kind of be from, from a kick up the ass motivational standpoint. Um, look, I still think that real estate agents should not be worried about all of these other tech companies coming out and trying to do what Zillow did, right? Zillow tried to completely eliminate realtors. It's not going to happen. Maybe one day in a hundred years when there's robots freaking walking around. But you know, nowadays, mate, once again, I still think people by people, uh, real estate agents are the ones selling the product. Um, and, and, and that's, I think, you know, that's not going to change for a very long time. Um, but you know, just summarizing everything, Josh, just work hard, like get out there, get, make shit happen, you know, get shit done, right? Get shit done. And, and I'm sure that you'll find success. It's going to come your way. Yep. No, I, I couldn't agree more, man. It, it's, uh, there, there's too many moving parts to the real estate transaction. Every, every real estate transaction is so different. You know, where, where you look at like the, you know, people are like, oh, well, what, what if the real estate agent gets replaced, like the travel agent got replaced. I'm like, well, it's pretty fucking easy. Like we're planning a, a trip to go to Maui for my wife, like for our kid's spring break. It's pretty easy for me to do my own due diligence and pick my own hotel and pick my own flights. That's totally different than me buying a $350,000 home and all the things that go involved into that. So I totally agree with you. You know, real estate agents get so wrapped up in consumer technology. I'm like, no, man, technology is your best friend. Learn how to leverage that technology systems like you're creating or, you know, as you know, I have my own uh, uh, perfect storm, which is, you know, we have around a thousand clients. It's not, it's not because I'm not a broker owner. It's not um, proprietary, just my brokerage. It's available to all agents in the US and Canada, um, you know, right? But I'm going to learn how to use that software, not to replace the human connection, but to allow me to go deeper with the human connection, be more effective and efficient so I can get more done and, and focus deeper on those relationships. Because, dude, and you hit the nail on the head. We are not in the real estate business. We're in the human resource, human connection business. I mean, period, right? Yep. And, um, you know, right. Uh, unlike you in the investment side, what I love about real estate is like you on the investment side, you own the real estate. This is your asset. You are actually selling a piece of real estate. Me as a realtor, I'm not selling real estate, but I'm selling my services, uh, um, to go out there and facilitate an experience that my clients want. And I just get paid a, a huge commission on selling other people's inventory. So yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head, dude. Um, you know, and then we talk about hard work, you know, right? Like I was just, I was just meeting with my ISA, you know, here's our numbers um, for 2018 for that department, right? So this is where I generate the leads. He does all the dials. So we're just setting appointments for agents, you know, right? But I mean, we're talking 12,000 dials a month 
39 text messages. You have 60 leads coming in, you know, right? So that's 3,000 dials a, a, a week that this dude has to do, you know, right? And it's just yep. straight, get on the phone, get grinding, you know, right? Hard work pays off 100% of the time. <laughs> Down, up and down, mate. Don't don't even drop the phone. Just press press the press the um press the button to to cancel the call and off you go again. <laughs> yeah. Well, and this yeah. is where it comes to technology, right? Like things like the, the a Mojo Power Dialer, you know, right? Like we just plug in the list, we click the go button, it auto drops the voicemail, and the voicemail picks up. We can do 180 dials an hour, cost three lines at once. That's how you leverage technology to get more done, but you still can't replace the hard work element. Yeah, agreed, mate. Hundred percent agreed. So then, okay, so next year, you're moving to New York. How do you feel about that, man? I mean, you're, you're pretty established in Ohio, man. How are you and your family doing with that? Dude, I'm the, I'm the freaking king of Ohio here. They should rename this place after my name. Like, <laughs> um, look, it, it, it's, it's, it's a sacrifice that needs to happen. I mean, I, I really want to give this a good crack. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going there with a timeline. So that pretty much means I'm going to stick my ass in New York until this is successful. Look, I love New York, mate. I grew up in Sydney, so I'm a, I'm a city boy. I, I get it. You know what I mean? I love the fast pace. I mean, that's where it's at. As Frank Sinatra says, if I can make it there, I'll make it anywhere. So it's up to New York, mate. Let's, let's see how things are going to evolve next year. You know, I'm, I'm really excited, mate. I, I truly am. I think that's where the money is. That's where the talent is. That's where it's all at. So we'll go there. We'll give it a good crack. I've got a great bunch of people here right now. Um, I'm, I'm still going to be traveling here, of course, but... You know, this business here, Josh, is, is almost self-sufficient and sustainable without me. And, and that is very, very, very important. You know, a lot of our investors that buy our product from all over the world, they're like, oh, Dingo, what if you get hit by a bus? And I was like, well, you know, what, you know there, there are so many things that can happen in this world, but they got a good point, you know, because you don't have a business until, until it's not dependent on you on the day-to-day, -day, right? So my job was to literally find myself from a higher cash over this last year I'm very close to getting there. You know, I've got some good people on board. I've got a great leadership team. I've got a great CEO. So we're still not there yet. I'm still, I'm still going to have to handhold it a little bit. Um, but yeah, mate, as I said, you know, that's going to, that's going to come to fruition very soon. And, and then sometime next year, I'm going to, I'm going to get my ass to New York and, and see what I can make from list and sell. Yeah, man. Nah, it's, it's going to be exciting. I, I do like just knowing you and knowing you for last year and watching you do like, I know you're going to dominate dude. So it's going to be j just from my own point as a spectator dude i'm excited to freaking watch it just just dominate and explode Thanks, man. man so watch the show dude watch the show the yeah <laughs> fireworks yeah. are happening <laughs> yeah I, I got my i got my popcorn ready baby um do it do it <laughs> so so then dude on you on a personal level right because people see what you're doing and and you know um my, my peak performance coach said something recently she said you know never put anybody on a pedestal when you put somebody on a pedestal that is you immediately creating an excuse or reason of why you are not willing personally to go through the growth that needs to happen to create that same level of success, right? So people may see you doing what you do and put you on this pedestal, but like you said, you're having that conversation with your wife, you know, right? You don't, you don't necessarily have some super power that people might think you have. It's just that, that laser focus and hard work no matter what. You know, right? But I'm sure you also experience a lot of tough times, right? Like, you know, uh, uh, entrepreneurship is, is like Jay Z's rap song, right? It's it's you know, full of smiles and cries, right? Um, how do you personally process? Like, what is your internal thought process that you go through um, when you are going yeah. through a rough time? I love it, dude. I, I lie to myself every single day. <laughs> I, I I lie to myself, mate. It's it's a constant. You're constantly feeding yourself with positivity, right? Because as you know, mate, so much bullshit that happens on a daily basis that um, if you succumb to that bullshit, it will be an emotional drag. And then that negativity will prevent you from focusing on growth, on expansion, on doing great things. So, dude, I just lie to myself. And how I do that is I'm always telling myself I'm the best. I'm the best looking. I'm, I'm the smartest. Uh, my abs are the freaking most cut, even though they're not, right? But all of these things that, that I feed myself on a daily basis, you know, enables me to stay the cocky, arrogant, and confident, confident individual that I am. And I can tell you right now, mate, you don't have to have any talent. You don't have to have any degrees. You have to work hard and you have to be confident. If you're confident in your ability, people stick to you like you wouldn't believe, mate. 
there's a saying, it goes like this. If you stand for nothing, you fall for everything. So if you stand for something and you're willing to work hard and you have that cockiness and confidence about you, people will levitate to you. So that's something that I've done, mate. You know, I, I'm constantly feeding my thoughts with positivity. Even though there's a lot of shit that happens on a daily basis, I try and ignore it. I don't want to let that be a part of who I am and what I'm doing. Um, if I make a mistake, dude, I learn from the mistake. I, I take that experience and I turn it into a good one and I proceed in a smarter way moving forward. So, you know, if you can master yourself, mate, you can truly master anything that you want. And, and that's one big thing that people need to kind of, you know, they really need to focus on, on, on themselves. And, and I see too many people getting brought down by others. And, and it's just, it sucks, mate. It sucks seeing it because I just don't give a shit, dude. I, I know where I'm going. I know how to get there. I'm strong headed. I'm stubborn and I'm laser focused. And, and, you know, I constantly feed myself that positive energy. And, and I, mate, I just keep killing it, dude. I mean, there's no other way to put it except I, I'm really, you know, killing it every single year. Uh, you know, we're getting bigger and better and um, the future's looking bright, dude. So, yeah, no, I love it, dude. And then, you know, you, you, you said, you know, the cocky word, right? And people might, you know, see you is, you know, cocky, whatever, which you have to have that as an entrepreneur, you know, right? It, it's like this, dude. This is how the world works. You go on Facebook and you put out there that you got a new job and you get 300 congratulations. Then you put on Facebook, oh, hey, I started a new business, right? No comments, you know, right? And then you get a call from your mom. Is everything okay? You know, right? Like, like you got the world almost against you. So like you said, you're not doing those affirmations, you know, lying to yourself. If you are doing those affirmations daily and you don't develop this extreme level of self-confidence um, with the world being against you, man, it can crush you. Dude, one million percent. Look, let's, let's talk about stereotypical bullshit, you know, uh, 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 thoughts on, of society. How does it work? Go to school, get a degree, find the job, find the partner, get married, buy a house, have kids, upsize. Kids are old enough, downsize, send kids to college, drop dead. That's the American dream, dude. Hey, God bless America. Josh, it's the best country in the world. It's given me everything that I have today, but I'm here to say, fuck the American dream. Honestly, I, I don't want people to believe in that bullshit, stereotypical view that society has brainwashed them with. You just said it. You get a job, 300, congratulations. You start a business. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? You're going to lose money. Don't do it. Blah, blah, blah. And that's the exact negativity and noise that all of us hear every single day. And I don't want to listen to it. I don't want to listen to it. I ignore it. And dude, as I said, there is not much good that happens on a daily basis. There just isn't. If you're running a business, forget about running a business. Say you're doing, you're just having it. You've got a job. Your boss is going to shit on you. Your partner is going to shit on you. The bus driver is going to shit on you. So if you constantly take all of these things to heart every single day, you've lost, you're done. It's gone. So you have to feed yourself with positivity all the time, every day, all day long, because that my friend is what's going to get you through the tough times. That is, that is what's going to push you forward. That is what will give you the confidence that you need to succeed. Um, just like I have, just like you have, Josh. And then one thing, mate, the magic recipe. In Australia, we call it hard yakka. In the US, it's hard work. Work your ass off, guys. Just work your ass off. Yep. Love it, dude. So then, you know, you, you talked about, hey, man, I mean, you know, last year or whatever, or recently you know, you, you, in the last year or two or whatever, I can't remember what the time frame was, but you're at a position now where you can retire. You can go to the Bahamas, sip your, your you know, uh, uh, pina coladas, ride your scooter, whatever the terminology that, that you said is. Well, for a lot of people, they hit that. And good becomes the worst enemy to greatness, right? Because you get to a point where you're like, fuck, like, you know, I, I did this and I had these big dreams in the beginning because when you're broke, you know, right, you go out there and work your ass and then you get to a point where you're like, man, I got, like, life is good and it can continue. I could stop today and life could be good for the rest of my life. What keeps you personally doing everything you do now when you don't have to do any of this? Love it, mate. Freaking awesome question. It's that fulfillment factor, right? So I've done over 450 real estate deals. And, and I've made a shitload of money doing them. But I gave a house away last year for Christmas time to a family in need. And, and, and seeing the smile on their face and how that affected them and, and my belief of their life moving forward, dude, that is shit that you carry with you to the grave. Like, that is what I can take with me no matter where the hell I am, no matter what the hell I'm doing. So that's what I'm chasing, Josh. I know it sounds corny, but I, I really want to leave a legacy. 
and, and I want that legacy to continue helping millions of people long after I'm gone. That's the purpose. That's my purpose. That's my why. That is what I'm chasing. And that is why I want to create this, you know, disrupting business that will one day be a billion dollar empire, right? Um, uh, so that's kind of what keeps me motivated. That's what keeps me going. One thing that I am, uh, you know, looking at finding now is, is my health is great. Like I mentioned earlier, I still need to work more on work-life balance, right? Because I am pulling long hours and I just want to spend more time with my loved ones and I, and I want to enjoy in the day-to-day -day more, you know? So that's something that is my next kind of phase thing. So when we catch up for another podcast next year, I'm hoping to bring you good news that I'm actually not pulling 15 hour days anymore, that I'm working, you know, 10 hours at the most. Um, but yeah, mate, so it's, it's just that fulfillment, dude. I, 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 the most fulfillment that I get is from seeing a smile on other people's faces when they receive something of importance to them. There's no better feeling than that, dude. Just the other day, I made a hundred grand profit on a deal. whoop de doo Like it's just, it just, that's three months worth of payroll. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it doesn't really, it doesn't really, I don't see it from that. It's just a figure. But giving that house away, mate, those are the memories that stay with you forever. So what it is in the future, right now I'm giving houses away. One day, I don't know what it's going to be, but I, 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 know what, I know I want it to be big. I know I want it to be meaningful. And that's why I do what I do. So. Yep. Yep. Love it, dude. And, and I, I know you didn't jump on the podcast to, you know, pitch your, your, your new brokerage and whatever. Um, but you know what, I mean, you're doing some amazing things and, and, you know, right. I, I totally believe in you and your vision. And, and with all that being said, like if somebody's listening to this, that's interested in learning more about you, learning more about your brokerage, you know, maybe they want to get involved with it or, or get you to expand to their area. What, what's, where's the best place to go learn more about that, to get in contact with you and do that? Yeah, great question, mate. So if they just Google agents come first.com um, or list and sell realty or just my name, Angela Ramora, mate, if, if you can put something in the, in the um, podcast notes, that would be great. I, I'm happy to chat to people. I'm more in the kind of research exploration stage than anything else. I've got no pitches for them. I just want to learn more what it is that real estate agents want and need. Um, and if I, if I can help them in any way, point them in the right direction. You know, I, I've been around the block, as they say. I've got, I've got quite a little bit of experience um, working as a real estate agent myself in Australia, owning a brokerage here, a property management company, and having a very successful real estate investment company. I'm happy to give them all the tips that they could want and need, man. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to help. So if they want to reach out, um, I'm happy to help. Yep. Love it, dude. Love it, man. So yeah, and, and those watching, listen, I don't care where you're at, whether you're on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Google Play, or the website, right below this will be links to all of those. So we'll make it very easy for you to go check out. So, you know, those that are watching and listening, dude, they are here because they want to go out there and create an epic life for themselves and their families, just like you've been able to do. What, what last pieces of maybe advice or inspirational words would, do you want to leave them with to help them go out there and do exactly that? All right, here's, here are two corny quotes, mate. Wake up before everyone, go to sleep after everyone, work harder and work smarter. And if you make a passion and obsession, you will never work a day in your life. Yep, love it. Powerful words, couldn't agree more, my friend. Um, those watching, listen, I know I end every podcast with this, but information without implementation truly is just the start of delusion. Information no longer is power. It's taking that information, taking massive action, on it that creates that power that you need and want to create the life that you want need. Um, and you guys had so many amazing pieces of advice dumped on you today. Make sure to take something that you learn and uh, go out there and take action on it and immediate action. And again, all those links will be below. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to Angelo, man. I know how busy you are. This has been a huge honor, man. Having me on the show. I truly appreciate you being here, dude. Thanks for having me, mate. Anytime. Yep. 100%. All right, you guys, we will see you next time.